I, I dealt with a toddler who, yes, crisis, crisis. <laughs> As I was talking, was her hand just went up to her brow bone <laughs> and she closed her eyes. So I can I tell that she's very drawing, triggered. drawing from a deep spot here. Continue. In this episode, we're having a conversation about something that we've become pretty passionate about, and that's the concept of workplaces recognizing parenthood as legitimate work experience. Not only do we want workplaces to value the skills that parenthood brings to a job, but we want parents to fully embrace their time at home with children, knowing that they're building skills that will be recognized and appreciated by their future employees if and when they're ready to jump back in the job pool. This is a series of four episodes where we dive into this topic. So come along with us and consider your own views on whether parenthood should count towards the skills and experiences listed on a resume and to maybe help you value your own role as a parent just a little bit more than you did yesterday. Hello, Sarah. I'm super excited about today. How are you? I'm very good. I'm excited too because we've been talking a lot about Building confidence for fellow work mums who have done a shit hot diggity job raising their <laughs> kids and wanting to re-enter the workforce. And we've talked a lot about changing the mindset, flipping the narrative and empowering people to not take on the years that they've been a stay-at-home parent mm. and feel that they were null and void, right? but instead empowering them to not only believe but acknowledge that those years up their skill level. Just grab those years by the balls. Absolutely. And say, here, workplace, take this. I can tell you're excited when you've dropped balls like yeah. one minute in. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we might come today to the table to have a look at what a resume would look like if parenting was your skill set. A hundred percent. We want you to know that your skills as a parent <laughs> are fully transferable and have and value valued in the workplace. <laughs> in the paid work. Stop stealing my words. <laughs> we do this a lot. But yeah, that you're you've got value in the workplace. Yeah. And I'm thinking if parents had a job description on Seek, <laughs> it would read something like this. Challenging long hours, long-term role, mm. requiring excellent communication, project management and organizational skills, <laughs> must be on hand 24-7 <laughs> <laughs> in a thriving, fast-paced <laughs> and often challenging environment. <laughs> yeah. Now, Anna, I know that you just want to rip and tear in, but <laughs> before we do, I'm just going to pull you back because I'm excited about one other thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always forget to ask people. We're getting some really great feedback um, internally to you and I, but we always forget to ask people for feedback or reviews. And I don't know why I was procrastinating of the day and was led down a rabbit hole and found out that we had a really great review on our uh, Apple Music. Oh, no way. Yes. Or is it Spotify? <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> I don't even know where to find our anyway, reviews. Anyway. Anyway, We've anyway, to I'm going to read it too because I know that you haven't come across this. No. So this does lead into, I'm not going off on way okay. more tangent, I'm but it does excited. lead excited. I hope it's a good review. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, wonderful podcast. Oh. I am a podcast junkie, but most of my content is focused on psychology, mm. neuroscience. Oh, who's this? Up my alley. And positive body image. Okay. So they're probably very disappointed with our podcast. <laughs> she then goes on to say, I don't go outside of these topics usually. Then I came across work wives. I could listen to Sarah and Anna all day. They have amazing voices and are so on point. Great content, which is informative and delivered with energy and fun. This is oh where this gosh. woman becomes a hero in my book. Okay. As a mum of six kids. Wow. And only with a very part-time business. Oh, oh, only very part-time with six freaking kids. <laughs> yes. Okay. She said she feels truly inspired by Anna and Sarah. Oh, what? I know. She then elaborates to say, I have recently turned 50 oh, and I am man. trying to grow my business. And this is where I just wanted to wrap my arms around her. Okay. Six kids. Yeah. With a part-time business. Yeah. And says this. I'm trying to grow my business because nobody 
wants to hire a 50 year old who has been at home for 25 years. Oh my God. Raising kids. Oh wow. Thank you for the amazing content. Who wouldn't want to employ somebody who's raised six freaking kids? Yeah. Wow. And this is what we've been talking the about. The skills, the skills that she would have. Yeah. Assuming it's a she. The skills that they would have just to understand like how to manage six different lives as well as their own and their spouses if they have one. What like, a completely what selfish, like at least when you have two kids, it can be over in 18 years. Six yes. kids drags that on for years. <laughs> like, that school run just keeps going. Like oh my lunches. God. <laughs> Okay, now I'm totally inspired to like turn this into a full resume kick in. Yeah. Okay, what skills could this person bring to the table? So I'm just After really, I'm, I'm inspired that she has found without us even digging into these content topics for long, that we're already giving her a little bit of a fresh breath of air and making her feel legitimate again. So, oh, all right, let's try and turn them into CV dot points. All right, let's mother of six, you're amazing. And we're going to tell you exactly why. So let's get into it. We have devised some skills that we think parents can add to their resume. What's your first one, Sarah? We were talking recently about some friends of ours re-entering the workplace after parenting for a long time. Yeah. And we were saying it really is a, a hidden problem in society that women, potentially men, are re-entering and feeling like they don't have a skill set. So we're here to tell you. Oh, you've got oh, some mate. skills. Oh, mate, do you just? All right. Oh, look, I'm not sure how this would read on the resume, but I really do believe that survival without sleep mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. right up there. When you look at a colleague who sits there and moans and whinges and bitches about having a shit night's sleep <laughs> <laughs> and you've been up with a spewing toddler mm. and a breastfeeding baby, you can turn around and go, yo, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I have achieved SAS status in survival without sleep. Survival without sleep. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I think my top pick would probably be above all, it would be leadership experience. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has leadership experience in the workplace. Got nothing on a toddler. <laughs> you can certainly transfer that to leadership experience running an entire household full of human beings and needing to teach them how to be adult human beings. Something that I think we all struggle with at the best of times. But if you want to see very quickly what kind of leader you are, try, yeah, telling like a yeah. four year old that he's got to take his hand off his penis. <laughs> We were, just talking, we were just talking about the differences between <laughs> boys and girls. And um, Anna and I recently had a holiday, total side dive here. But her son, I was absolutely gobsmacked at the amount of time in the day your son dedicates to handling his member. <laughs> I mean, if if my girls did the same thing, I think I'd probably take them to a psychologist. <laughs> I really do think that boys rip in a lot earlier than women, but um, yeah. than little girls. But yeah, that's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, even just think about birthday parties. If you've had to lead, right? Say fifteen screaming five year olds at a birthday party. Mm -hmm. That's going to tap into the best leadership skills you've ever and I just think leadership on a greater level you've got three daughters mm -hmm. and the biggest way that you're being a leader is by showing them what kind of human they can be mm. right you you're leading by example mm -hmm. of who you're trying to you know get them to grow up to try and be and yep. that can be hard when you want to like dive into your lower self <laughs> no you're consistently they make me tap into my higher self on the daily yeah our yeah. car trips you know when I grew up we had Buses, we don't have those where I live. I have to drive. And the conversation is always really sweet and beautiful because I'm driving from a higher headspace of leadership. Yes. I'm yeah. not going to take them down to let's bitch about so-and-so. It's always finding the positives of the day. That's some of the that's some of the best leadership skills that you can, you know, pull out of your ass is trying to teach someone how to be a decent human All right. being. 
All right. Okay. Parents out there, okay. chuck that on your old resume. <laughs> Speaking of skills, I think the greatest skill I learned as a parent was negotiation. Negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> Look, teaching children to ride a bike or I'm sure in later years to drive a car needs top-notch negotiation skills. But the piece de resistance of mine so far has been tapping into trying to negotiate with a toddler that they need to have that bite of avocado. I was just <laughs> going to say my biggest negotiation broccoli. skills at night time is trying to get my fucking child to eat his goddamn dinner. Yep. Just eat. Just eat. And let me take you back to a recent trip that I had with you and your son. But why? But why? <laughs> but, but why? why? But Negotiation why? at why? its finest. Or he'll look at me and be like, if I have one bite, then I can have dessert. And I'd be like, mate, you're four. You don't. I, but then I find myself like getting sucked into it, like trying negotiating with him. And then I have to pull myself out and be like, no, 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 no. I don't negotiate with terrorists. You're four years old. <laughs> eat your fucking dinner. Yeah. Like, we'll talk yeah. later. So I never, I, I was a manager in many of my previous employments, but nothing got me negotiating like right? dinner trying time. Trying to convince a kid to eat a meal. Or bath time. Yes. Grace hates bathing, hates it. She would be the stinkiest kid at school if she could and trying to negotiate that kid on hair washing night. And it's how early they learn. I have to dig deep. How to bargain. Yeah, right? or how to rattle your <laughs> weak spots, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They know. They but know she says to me, let's you. watch some Heartland and you can have a wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pour it for you, Mum. <laughs> it's reverse negotiation. But I do believe that that's a massive, massive skill that we can add to our resume. Yeah. Okay, negotiation skills. One step further to that, crisis management <laughs> and conflict resolution. <laughs> Talk right? to me. Give me Give me an ex- example. Crisis. Well, you know, you'd probably have more experience in this than I do because I have a four-year-old and like a nine-month-old, so they don't hate each other yet. But I feel like in time, well, no, I do. I, I dealt with a toddler who, yes, crisis. crisis <laughs> As I was talking, her hand just went up to her brow bone <laughs> and she closed her eyes. So I can I tell that she's very drawing, <laughs> drawing from a deep spot here. Continue. A triggered. <laughs> <laughs> like not having a good moment in my brain. Yes. I've dealt with crisis, you know, of irrationality. Even last night, I had a crisis of irrationality with my son yep. who, again, didn't, it all, it all plays into the same thing. He didn't want to eat, but You've then he gone didn't want to have your a bath, calming voice. But then he didn't want to go to bed, but then he didn't want to, like, he, he didn't want to do anything. And I was yep. like, I don't know how to deal with this crisis because you're going off like a frog in a sock and yep. I don't know how to help you. But I think the crisis has hit you from very early days. Really? Oh, I remember taking Zahara when she was five days old back into my workplace and I had her all dressed up and she did a punami. <laughs> there was shit everywhere. I'm telling you, that was one of the greatest crises <laughs> I've ever averted. There was, it was on, it was hanging off the ceiling of the car and I remember I had five minutes to clean her up get her t- I dressed her up that day and I was so proud to I had white je- who wears white jeans after having a baby white jeans and uh, you were like I'm gonna show these motherfuckers talk I'm about wear some white jeans the best five minutes you've ever seen someone clean up a freaking oh. shit off the ceiling and off the off it was it, anyway <laughs> You don't need to actually visualize this. But what I'm saying, you'd really do get thrown in the ditches. Yeah. And yeah. deep. Crisis, crises, left, right and center and conflict resolution as well. So like trying to like, again, reach into the core of our higher being mm. and not, it's very easy for my toddler to pull me into something that I know is a very unhealthy or toxic oh, wow. coping mechanism. No, like I'll, I'll, I'll be like, talk, you know snapping back at him or like saying right. things that I'm like, as soon as I say it, I'm like, Hi mate, yourself. you're 37 years old. Like, why are you playing into a four year old's dramas? Yeah. And I have to like stop myself and re jig and like, you know, come at it from a place where I'm trying to understand where he's coming from. I've just had an epiphany that it's not just re-entering the workplace. It's re-entering the workplace in a managerial, like management role mm. <laughs> because these skills are not just, I'm ready. Mm. These are like, I'm ready to come and conquer because I've, <laughs> I've already dealt with Armageddon at home. 
My next point is a beautiful skill. I'm going to double up some skills. Tolerance and patience. Yeah. Look, we've all been there. A screaming public meltdown in the middle of Woolworths. (laughs) (laughs) And you breathe. And smile and come on, darling. <laughs> I'm sure there's a point where you'd love to absolutely have it off with your toddler in the middle of that aisle. But we breathe and we dig deep and we go into the quinoa aisle and we happily fill our trolley with thoughts of a nice dinner. So that would come down to like people management, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or even HR. Yeah. <laughs> HR skills, human resources. Yeah. How to deal with a troubled or troubling employee. Uh, dealing <laughs> with Johnny in accounts as a breeze after a <laughs> meltdown in the middle of aisle four. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think another thing with that, dealing with a meltdown in aisle four and generally getting the day to day life skills would be excellent time management skills time management will be one of the top things that a parent would have to really be on top of to yep. just get through a day yes. right and I used to think that was important in the early years but now that my diary is full of stuff that's got nothing to do with me <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's crazy like I wish my kids didn't have friends because they go to a lot of parties and mm. it's not just the parties it's the buying presents it's the wrapping it's the you know it's Dropping them off, picking them up, organizing yourself, sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm. Time manage- time management skills would definitely be up there. And yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to move on to my next point, which oh, is right. head of resources. Oh. <laughs> when you look into your pantry on a Wednesday night oh. and you couldn't be sh- shafted yes. going to the shops. It's amazing how you can rustle up with the leftover bit of hummus, resources. a dry cracker, resources department, yeah, chuck the last egg in a bit of boiled water. Voila, you've got a pad thai, right? <laughs> or just what I call a party plate, just a bit of everything on You're a plate. Good with the party plates, yeah, actually, I yeah, do love just a bit grabbing... of more, more colors of the rainbow, the better. Do you want to talk about head of resources? I aced that the other day. So Emmett, my youngest, is nine months and he's a bit of a funny being. He hates with a fiery passion packaged foods, but he'll Does, eat doesn't literally he? anything that I cook. And I'll prove to you that that's the case because last week I needed to cook him some more food. I was out of food for him. So I just opened my fridge and I said, what's left over? I cooked some chicken and a bunch of leftover vegetables. So which, credit to you though, because that kid woofs it in. Like, he does. He yeah. loves it sick. He loves his food. He's a big eater, big boy. And um, so I had like carrots, celery, like just a bunch of weird stuff, right? And then I had like half a bottle of Posada. So I chucked that in because I was just trying to use up all that leftover stuff. I tasted it. It tasted like shit. So I was like, well, this is no good. What do I do here? So I looked in my... Um, herbs and spices. And I didn't really have anything that was appropriate. They didn't have like a lot of salt or sodium added to it, except like a, like a Thai spice mix. I was looking for like Italian seasoning, right? Right. Let's make it like a pasta situation. (laughs) Didn't work. All I could find was Thai spice. So I put Thai spice in (laughs) with an Italian vegetables and chicken mix tasted even worse. And I went, well, I've really ruined this. I better sweeten it up. So I put some banana in. (laughs) Poor kid. (laughs) He loves it. He ate the whole <laughs> lot. Wow. <laughs> loves it. So resourcefulness. Resourcefulness. Yep. Whatever I had tick. to get that was tick. Yep. I ticked it that day, yes. All right. What's your next one? Okay. My next one would be projects and events manager. Mm. Mm. Talking about birthday parties on a weekend. Oh I know God. you. last weekend was a cracker for you, right? How was your projects and events management skills last weekend? Started at 4.30 mm. in the morning. Oh, in the morning? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hubby was away. Mm-hmm. I had two weddings on that day mm. in two different states. Mm. One in the morning, one in the afternoon. Um, as, a, as a wedding. You were going as a wedding yes, celebrant. Yes, I was yes. as a wedding celebrant. So tapping into another role. <laughs> you want to give yourself some more skills. <laughs> public speaking um, <laughs> yeah so I had two weddings in two different states three girls at home had to start at four thirty to go and feed the horses before morning sport okay came home 
did one wedding in an, in New South Wales. After your morning sports. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Came okay. back, uh, got dressed, did a rechange, uh, dropped a kid off a party, went down, drove into Brisbane, Queensland. Yeah. It, it just kept going. It was continu- <laughs> It went until 9.30 at night when I picked up a child from ice skating. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So project and events management. And all I wanted was a red wine. By the time I got home at 10 o'clock, I was like. You just zonked. No, I couldn't. Couldn't do a thing. No, it wasn't even a good night's sleep and a uh, face mask was all I could conjure. Yeah. So yes. 100% events management. And that's that's the Saturday. That's that's your time off. That's the weekend that you look forward to. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's an example of. Mm. It's what we do. It's what we do. What's your next one? Creativity. Oh, yeah, just, creative department. Yeah, creative resourcefulness, I Ooh. think. So, I mean, we've all been there. Mud pies, mm-hmm. necklaces out of pasta in your cupboard, <laughs> musical instruments through tapping out the rice. And uh-huh. so, yeah, I, I can bring creativity to the workplace after being a mum. Mm, that's not something I've always, that's not my strength. Yep. My other people will do that in my life. You're, you're one of them. So you're, whenever you're around my children, you'll like create stuff out of nothing. I said that the other, in one of our last podcasts about a friend of mine who will go to their house and she'll create a bunch of really interesting dinner items for my son. Yes. Whereas I, all I can see in my fridge is I've got so much stuff in my fridge and freezer and pantry, but all I can see is like chicken tenders and no I turn it into a rainbow on a yeah, plate I, yeah so I, I I struggle with that creative side of things but I really have a lot of respect for mums who can like pull you know make play-doh out of fucking whatever it is flour and salt that they do and but like... that taps into my last one resourcefulness as well a party I had the weekend before last I was so organized I had everything and then turned around and realized I didn't have wrapping paper so I got my daughter to color in this big ass piece of something she had and we wrapped it up with there that you go, so see and i saw some one of my friends on instagram had gone down to a um creek with her kids and had mixed some water with the dirt and was using it as paint like you know painting on the back of their hands to show them what different mm. color the different dirts make like yeah the creative the creativity that's bought out of us with parenting i think is wild yeah mm. okay what's my next one uh, mentoring experience I guess that hacks into my leadership. Did you say mentoring skills. or no, mentoring? mentoring. Oh, okay, because I could go either yes. way there. Yeah, mentoring, like as in, yeah, I mentored several mentees mm-hmm. um, in my in my work as a nurse, but in my work as a parent, the mentoring has challenged me to degrees that I didn't think I was capable of. <laughs> but it's great. It's great to see. I think it's very fulfilling to see the, um, to have, well, because I have boys, they don't so much look up to me, but I really love when my boys, like the other day, like my son was telling me all about how much he just wanted to be like daddy. And then I was like, I was really enthralled by like how everything that my husband does is looked up to by my kids. And they just look at him with such adoring eyes and they just want to be exactly like him and go where he does and do what he does and yeah it's just really Sweet. yeah do you find that with your girls that they look I actually that was way? going to say I find that you just don't give yourself enough credit because you say that you're not great at mentoring but it's funny I think sometimes you do identify better with different ages mm. and I see you with my daughters who are a little bit older um, even though you're an incredible, you're an incredible mom, but I think that you find it a lot easier to relate with them. Like to when have conversations, yeah. Or yeah. even when we went to Hamilton Island recently, um, you know, you threw them in the golf buggy and gave them a lesson, and I could yeah. see you coming alive. And I think we all relate to different stages better. Some people mm. are wonderful with babies. Some people love toddlers. Some people are f- fucking Mother Teresa and do it all with <laughs> grace. <laughs> Like, kudos to you. But I do think that, you know, you're not giving yourself enough credit because I looked at you and went, wow, I could have probably done that. Because I, you know, I feel like I've been pretty good throughout the stages, but I thought I could really see you. And I know that in an environment from your workplace, you used to do a lot of teaching and mentoring and you did it so well. You know, you had all of them (laughs) illegally driving (laughs) golf buggies and they were like 
they were alive. They yeah. like their love was infectious, but so was the twinkle in your eye that you had taught them. And you taught them so much. Any parent who has taught a child to drive would be <sighs> sitting there nodding their head. I haven't been through it yet, <sighs> but I do dread the thought of it. You were so meticulous and calm and nurturing that I had to walk away because I was going, no, 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 no yeah, uh, 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 shut up and <laughs> See, walk. It's so and it's really you... funny. So you don't give yourself credit for that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I think it's really interesting because on that same trip, I remember that um, one of your daughters was just having a bad day or a bad morning or something. And I remember, I don't know what had happened because she was just in another room having a moment, but you just left with her. And I was like, oh, I don't know what's happening there, but you guys just left together. And I was like, oh, and then, and you came back and told me later on that she'd been having a moment. So you just got her out of the house, went for a drive with her in the golf buggy, um, and did whatever it was that you needed, that you knew was going to help her feel better. And I thought about it later and I was like, man, if that was either of my kids, I would have been like, stop it, get in a better mood. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Whereas I think her you... love language is really one-on-one. Yeah, but, so you I... were, but you were able to, so many parents, if they were struggling in a moment with their child who was not having a good moment or like, you know, Austin plays up all the time and I'll just be like, Austin, stop playing up as opposed to redirecting him to get him in a better mood. Does that make sense? I would have been a really good occupational therapist, I think, because I can really <laughs> divert kids' attention. <laughs> Yeah, you just totally redirected her and she came back and she was like, whatever was going on with her was done. Yeah. And you just kind of knew like how to tap into her. To tap into that, which I think is something that a lot of parents don't inherently understand how to do. So that's another another skill set. Yeah. So I think there's a whole heap of others we could elaborate on, but I'm excited to hear from other people. So, I mean, I've also got planning, attention to detail, Mm -hmm. organization, purpose, Mm -hmm. self-motivation, accounting, bookkeeping. Ability to meet deadlines. Mentoring. Oh, no, I just went You just did that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to, yeah, I think we, we will put a post out to ask people how they would frame their parenting yeah, in a resume context. Let's bejiz. Is that even a word? Let's bedazzle. <laughs> bejiz. It's a word now. <laughs> let's bejiz the fuck out of people's resumes. I'm all about bringing back some confidence and letting people know that you've done a good job, mama or dada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got this and we got you. Amazing. We, I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait to hear what people People are so funny. And I I love, I love, I love a reverence to people that kind of take the shit, like, you know, Mm. take the piss out of themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think as parents, we take it to another level, like of humor, what, what we do and some of the things that we have to put up with. And sometimes my friends who endure some really difficult situations with children where their children have difficulties or problems their sense of humor gets them through and that Mm. really lights me up I sometimes think how do you cope and I think sense of humor is the answer sometimes and in a very Mm. PC world yeah (laughs) a good like self-depreciating sense of humor is what can really yeah spark the fire yeah so we want to hear it jump on the.work.wives at the our, our Instagram and you'll see the post about like how to frame your best parenting quality onto a resume application. Let us know. What if you're you. even ready to go back, but this is more so for those people who are feeling that they need to empower themselves because they're ready to go back. They're at that stage of their life. Not all of us are, but let's get you know, on the, I think also for those who are in the trenches and they're like, what the fuck am I doing this for? Yeah. And like, <laughs> at least with a bit of humor, like, you know, night duty skills <laughs> at 3 and they can be like, at least this will mean something in 10 years. <laughs> bed, w- bed wedding. Yeah. There's, there's a whole lot of skill in that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So cool. we're going to open up, like check out our socials um, and, and help empower other parents who are looking to get back there. And I'm really Looking forward to a giggle. Can't wait to see it. See ya. Bye.